Hi folks, Glenn here and in this video I want to show you a really quick way to remove those really annoying halos when you do selections and cutouts in Photoshop. Alright, so on the screen you can see the final retouch picture of my friend Dave Clayton who wanted to be made to look like the guy Carl from Pixar's movie Up. The actual background here was drawn by our friend Aaron Blaze who's a digital artist. I'll put details of Aaron in the description part of this video. But if we come over to here, here you can see the picture of Dave still on the original background but I've actually done all the retouching in Photoshop to make him look as best as I can like the character Carl from Up. Now if I zoom in you'll see that you can actually just about make out the marching and selection going all the way around Dave's body and his head. I've made a selection here using the quick selection tool in Photoshop and then refine edge to kind of finesse that to make sure I pick up all the little stray hairs. Obviously the updated version is now called select and mask. Now let's just zoom out by double clicking the hand tool. Now when we have the actual margin and selection active, best practice when we're actually doing a cutout rather than dragging off the, the picture is to actually use a layer mask. So with the marching ant selections you can see going around Dave, I'm going to come down to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the layer mask. Now then when I do that you'll notice that we get this transparent area around Dave. This is kind of faking a cutout really, it's not, the background is still there, in fact if we go over to the layer mask, hold down the alt on PC or option and click on the layer mask we can actually see it. The white area is what we can see, which is obviously Dave. The black area here is the background, the original background, but it's been hidden behind this black part on the layer mask. Now the advantage of doing cutouts on layer masks is, if for example, let's just say that I'd maybe made the selection of Dave and missed a part, just like this little bit on his leg here, I could then come with a brush, paint with white, which will reveal part, black conceals white reveals, if I paint with white now I can actually paint back in the bit that I missed. Had I just dragged off Dave from the background you would not be able to do this. So using the layer mask is an incredibly flexible way to work. But that's not the real point of this tutorial. Now that we've actually done the cutout what I'm going to do just to illustrate this is to add a layer beneath Dave. To do it beneath I'm going to hold down the control key on PC, command key on Mac and click on the new layer icon at the bottom of this layers panel. And then I'm going to fill that with black. So I'm going to hold down my Alt key and then backspace to fill with black. And when we zoom in now, going around the outside of Dave, you may have experienced this as well with cutouts that you do, you can see this kind of outline going around him. It's kind of like a halo. And that is really parts of the background. You're not going to really ever get this when you use something like the pen tool because it is incredibly accurate. If you want to know how to use the pen tool, just click on the little card that's appearing at the top of the screen uh, just about now. But when you're using other techniques in Photoshop, you may experience this halo. It can be annoying, but it's incredibly quick and easy to fix. I want to show you how we do that. Let's just double click on the hand tool to zoom back out. Now what we're going to do, over in the layers panel, click on the layer mask to make it active. And now you can see we've got this kind of frame going around the layer mask. Then I'm going to press L on the keyboard to get my lasso tool. And all I'm going to do is draw around Dave. So I'm not making an accurate selection, I'm just basically telling Photoshop only to look in the area within this selection. Now I'm not going to go over his hair because we haven't got a halo on the hair, it's mainly on his body. So I'm just going to draw straight across to join that selection together. So now you can see we've got the marching ants going around Dave's body. So Photoshop now will only really concentrate on this particular area. Now bearing in mind I am actually uh, active on the layer mask. What I'm going to do now is go to Filter blur and Gaussian blur. And this is a really important step. If you don't do this, when we finally get rid of that halo, it's going to look really obvious that you've done it. It's going to look a very, very sharp outline around Dave. And we want it to kind of blend in, so we need to just blur the outside a little bit. Now you only need to add a small pixel radius. One is perfectly enough, and we'll just click OK. Once we've done that, all we're going to do then is go to the image menu at the top of the screen, adjustments and then we're going to choose levels. Now we're not going to choose a levels adjustment layer from over here on the right hand side, we're just going to go to the image menu, adjustments and then levels. And then all we're going to do is go into the black point in the far left hand side of the histogram and start to drag it over to the right hand side. But before I do that, let me just zoom in so we can actually see what this is going to do. So concentrate here where we can see the halo going around parts of Dave. Now as I click on this black point and start to bring it into the middle, 
you'll start to notice that eventually that halo is going to completely disappear just like it has now. So this is before we move it, this is after we move it, before and after. So it's a really quick way of actually removing the halo. But what are we actually doing there now that we've done it? Let's just show you what we're actually accomplishing here. Let's just go back and we'll cancel that. And I'm actually going to go to the view of the layer mask. So again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click on the layer mask so we get the layer mask view. Then I'm going to go back to the image menu, choose adjustments and then levels. And this is purely to show you what we're doing. Let's just zoom in. Keep an eye on this black area where it joins the white. Now, just like before, to get rid of the halo, what we did was we clicked on this black point and then we dragged inwards. Can you see it moving back before, after? There's before, there's after, before and after. So basically what we're doing is when we click on this black point and drag it inwards to the middle and beyond actually heading towards the white area, we're actually making the black area grow. And as it grows, it covers even more of the picture, which is obviously Dave. It's already hiding the background. If we add more black, it's going to start creeping over Dave. As it creeps over Dave, it creeps over that halo. So let's just go back there one more time. Let's go back to the normal view, get those levels adjustment, get that black point here, drag it across so the actual black part of the mask grows even more and starts to go over Dave. Now you don't want to go all the way over because you'll make him shrink. Just drag it over just enough until the halo disappeared and then you're all done. And now it actually can see it sort of blends in really well purely because we did that very, very small amount of blur at the very start. So we click OK double click on the hand tool and then we can just go command or control D to deselect and then go on and carry on working on our cutouts but without the halo. So that's all So that's all we've got for you. It's a very, very quick video. The reason I put this one together is I'm always being asked, how can I get rid of that halo? I have recorded it in previous videos, but it's always buried way down deep into the video. So I thought I'd just put this one together, purely concentrating on that one particular technique. So that's all for now. I shall leave you this trailer and I'll see you next time. Hi folks, Glenn here. Just to remind you that if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button on my YouTube channel and also click the bell icon and tick in the notifications checkbox so that you'll never miss any of the live broadcasts. That's just a great and free way of showing you like the channel. Also, over on my website at glyndewis.com, click on the newsletter menu item to join my email group and download your free ebook called How to Develop Your Style. Fill in your email address, first name and family name and then click on the subscribe button. And finally, add me in and connect over on Instagram by finding me with the username at Glyndewis.